Dot, 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 dot. Good morning, everybody. This is Grant. We've got a light show for you today. We're going to be talking about how and when to disrupt yourself, or at least my current approach on it. We're going to be talking about little dog. Little dog. I am totally butchering the phrase little dog. We're going to be talking about a new plastic composting approach. But before any of that, you know what we're about to do. Morning cup of gratitude. Yes, my lovely people. I'd love to actually sit and hear from you today. What are you grateful for and how are you starting your day with gratitude? I'll totally start this morning. I love, I love, 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 and I'm grateful for the past few productive days we've had. It's been really interesting to watch Marissa come back from her trip and us powwow and accomplish so much as a team for our investments and our business. We had a rather, rather long day uh, last night, and uh, that got me thinking about Little Dog, which we'll talk about today. Uh, but I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for my personal study. I'm grateful for my personal study, and I'm grateful for this one fact, if you're paying attention today. I'm grateful for the ability to choose to change at any time. I don't know about you, but I am grateful for the ability to choose to change at any single time, and hopefully that changes for the better. We were talking to an individual last night who was stuck in a few mental loops of their own, and I realized how many of you, how many people actually get completely stuck and completely hung up on old story loops, which is why we're talking about creative destruction today. So we're going to talk about that. That's what I'm grateful for. What are you grateful for? What are you most excited about on this lovely day? I'd love to hear about hear about that in the comments. Let's talk about a few pieces of other news. In other news, there is now a new technique that could make plastic trash compostable right at your home. If you're used to composting, here, let me just put this in the comments. Boom. If you're used to composting, or if you've ever seen the concept, and at the same time, if you've been absolutely frustrated with how much plastic and micro plastic is out there in the world, pay attention. So long story short, this uh, researcher, Ting Shu of the University of California, Berkeley, and Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, uh, they're a scientist. They've been working on plastics for some time, and they recently said that they said biodegradability of plastic does not equal compostability of plastic. You see, biodegradable plastic is not compostable. Biodegradable is just the phrase that we use to say that something can break down to a smaller, smaller, smaller component. Hey, microplastics are biodegradable, and we know that microplastics now are in everything. Yes, we've successfully biodegraded plastic to smaller components, but it is still out there as a polymer chain. The molecule itself has not been broken down. Well, Ting Shu was bothered by this, and Ting Shu actually has come up with a polymer munching enzyme that can actually take plastic packaging, forks, uh, and turn it and decompose it into something even down to its molecular size. And what they found out was this. And a lot of decomposing or biodegrading functions, the actual plastic would fall apart into a microplastic before the enzymes itself could finish its work of decomposing the molecule. So what Ting Shu's component does is it actually keeps the plastic together bonded with its own unique enzyme. Instead of clumping away and turning into a microplastic, it keeps it as a single unit while the rest of the enzymes continue to go to work down to the molecular level to the point that they've even shown a test where they've taken the plastic and put um, both in water, one with the enzyme and one without. The one without the enzyme was still in the water. The one with the enzyme turned into water and you could drink it. It was perfectly drinkable because the enzyme stayed with the plastic long enough for the other plastic molecule disintegrating functions to complete. A lot of microplastics, they could benefit from it, but they fall apart too quickly. So Ting Shu has come up with this actual um, enzyme that will continue its work. So if you're interested in new 
in interesting ways that enzymes can be used to improve uh, decompostability. And what this could look like is this. If I have a compost pile out, out there, it doesn't work on all plastics, but it works on many. If I have a compost pile out there, I can actually stick my plastic in the compost pile, go to Ace Hardware or your local hardware store, Home Depot or Lowe's, and just put some of the enzyme in the compost and continue to stir it up. And in just a few days, the plastic can actually decompose entirely in your compost pile. It's a pretty impressive thing. Check that out. And that's your first piece of other news, how we can actually get better at decomposing our plastics, not just microplastics, but decompose it at the molecular level. There you go. You got the link there. Ooh, let me put it over here so you can see the thumbnail. Boom. There we go. There it is. And you can actually see in the thumbnail two buckets, one uh, with the enzyme, the other without. You can check that out there. Let's talk about the Swedish tradition of Lillard Dog. Mm, 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 mm. So, yes, in short, we all know that whether it's the pandemic or just the monotony of a normal work week, we need something. We call Wednesday, for example, hump day. But people actually have so much pent-up rage and energy and, and just exasperation by the end of the week. They just want to blow off steam and let loose. So oftentimes, Friday nights or Saturday nights are ragers. So all Saturday, they're prepping for their rager Saturday night. Good morning, Root. I hope you're doing fantastic, sir. I'd love to actually have you on the show and interview you a little bit about some of the changes you've had. So reach out to me, DM me or something, and let's jam. Um, so yeah, most of the time, weeks can get so... Um, challenging and anxiety ridden that we actually just blow off steam. And a lot of people go out and party Friday night. They worked all day Friday. They party Friday night. They sleep in most of the day Saturday, their day off where they're supposed to get mental rest and no laying in bed does not equal mental rest, especially if you're hungover. you're barely recuperating and your RM sleep is mat REM sleep is massively interrupted. So they wake up late in the midday Saturday, barely able to pull themselves together. They start with a bloody Mary, they freshen up and they say, you know what? I'll actually want to see my friends and hang out. And then it turns into another rager. And then Sunday is a repeat. And they say, finally, it's Sunday afternoon. I'm going to actually rest. But they're already anxious thinking about their Monday. How many people's weekends go like that? Too many. Too many people's weekends are eaten up by trying to blow off steam in a single weekend's rager. And that's just unacceptable. So the Swedes have possibly an alternative called Lillardag. And I'm going to actually put this down so you can Google it. No, you don't have the letters. Tom Phillips says, if you're going to party on the weekends, make sure you use the squeeze. <laughs> the downtown golf cart starting in July. Yes, Tom Phillips stopped by the table yesterday and told us about the squeeze. And uh, it's actually going to be quite interesting. If you guys are going to be downtown in Lakeland, you can actually get public transportation. They got a great philosophy for evenings. They got a great philosophy for lunches. Lunches are going to be much quicker. Evenings are going to be um, having a slower turnaround time, so you can actually mill about, but they're going to have more loops. You can get around the downtown, so check that out. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> so Lillardag is this. Lillardag is the tradition of, and Lillardag roughly translates to Little Saturday. How do you have a little Saturday in the middle of the week and, and how this is put into practice to create a bit more happiness throughout the week is that Wednesday, late in the day, Wednesday or Wednesday evening, have a little Saturday, blow off a little bit of steam. Don't hold your breath with monotony all week long. Actually schedule uh, a little Saturday like break of maybe a small happy hour with friends. No, we're not talking about a rager. No, we're not talking about getting a freaking hangover. We're talking about just a little bit of happy hour with the friends or a little indulgence at home with your spouse or even a midweek movie in the afternoon and just blow off a little bit of steam. And I've often said to Marissa, Thursday should be, I'd like my Thursdays to be like my Mondays because I already work half a day Saturday. And we, and me and Marissa have talked a lot about work-life blend instead of work-life balance. Can I go get a haircut in the middle of the day? Sure. Am I going to work a little bit later that night? Sure. Instead of just trying to be an absolute workaholic, you don't want that. But instead of just trying to compartmentalize and trying to store everything up on the weekend and balance our life, forget work-life balance. Make a work-life blend. I don't know any millionaires that aren't willing to take a few emails in the evening. But I don't know any millionaires or wealthy people 
that wouldn't also be willing to take time during the day to actually have lunch with a daughter or a spouse or a friend. And I recommend, and not everyone has that luxury, I get it, but with the Lillardag, the Swedish tradition of a midweek break, that's like a micro Saturday, you can actually get a little bit of, uh, and make it absolutely not about work for a few hours. Uh, don't work late into the evening. Maybe get off work a little bit early in the middle of the afternoon if you're struggling to find some work-life blend. So let me give you a quick uh, a quick link on this. And this is the one of the top reasons that some Swedes, or at least the Swedes interviewed, claimed that they actually had a bit more happiness than others because it wasn't all about dragging things out and having a crazy workaholic week and then trying to stuff some basic social life. And I know I don't mean your social media. I mean a healthy, robust, in-person uh, social life with people. Enjoying that in the middle of the week can actually be good. I remember one time, and it will always stick with me, some day that my dad just picked us up from school and said, we're going to the beach. And that just felt so good and so special that my dad thought of picking me up from school in the middle of my high school day, and we just went to the beach and had time together. It was special. And I still, it still stays with me. Go be that person once in a while and enjoy a little bit of Littler Dag. Check that out. <laughs> so that's our bit of other news. Let's talk about creative destruction and the changes that need to happen to level up. Let's talk about this. Mm, 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 mm. So we know that Schumpeter, the economist, read after Karl Marx and a bunch of other people. We know that uh, Schumpeter, was um, uh, was the school was of the school of Austrian economics, though I don't believe Schumpeter. I don't recall if Schumpeter is, was an Austrian himself. But they followed a lot of different economic models, and eventually Schumpeter popularized and codified the idea of creative destruction, meaning all markets, all markets. You'll have a new entrant into the market, say a cell phone. That person will enter the market. And suddenly, if it's a good product, people will adopt it left and right. So um, Apple comes out with the touchscreen iPhone in the early 2000s, and we all melted our brains. But what happens in an economic model like this is it's become so good that even the Me Too people will enter the market. Consumers won't want to spend $800. Consumers way more than a computer, which they use more than their phones. So we're going to want to get something more economized. So new people will enter the market, sell cheaper phones, and maybe it'll be lower quality or maybe it'll be the same quality at a better pricing model. And the market will get flooded. And then it will become old hat. Now, iPhone and Apple, they've been able to keep a very high pricing model on phones. In fact, if anything, all phones have gone up in price. We pay more for our phones than we do for our computers. And But eventually it becomes old hat. And as it becomes old hat, Demand is like, eh, the market gets watered down and then it actually destroys itself. And if you hold on too long to that model, if you hold on too long to I'm only going to do phones, the market will correct and you'll go out of business. And this cycle is largely no. And then there'll be something new, right? Then there'll be an iPad. So then the iPad will come out or tablets. And I remember when me and Marissa were dating, I showed her my fancy, my fancy iPad tablet. And we would do the Stargazer app together. And it was the coolest new thing. But, but these things turn into old hat. And then you have to do something new. Faster computers, gaming laptops, you name it. Google Glass, you name it. And these things, these cycles happen where something new comes out. The new entrant gets a large share of the rewards. Other people enter the market. It gets flooded. Demand goes down. And if you hold on to that model and you don't innovate, you'll go down. Whatever you started your business in, most likely you will not end your business in. Most likely. Most likely. In most industries. Taking the market as a whole. Now, you might be in the municipal industry. You do need to remain innovative in the municipal industry. You might be in other <clears throat> industries that have been around for a long, long time, but you don't want to become victim to the horse and buggy, right? You don't want to be a buggy whip business in an automobile world. And we know that example from Think and Grow Rich and from other books and just history. Creative destruction is the cycle of interrupting yourself. Quite often, I think Steve Jobs was credited with a quote, but so many people of other passed along the sentiment that if you do not disrupt yourself, 
the world will disrupt you for you. You're going to get disrupted. I mentioned Root Patel earlier in the show that I'd love to actually interview him on the show um, and do an interview with him because he's a very progressive young man. He's doing a lot. His business is growing and going at a rapid clip. And this guy wanted to be the next Elon Musk. He was talking about his billion dollar empire. And we still, we still can talk about that. But a few months ago, Root came to me and announced, that's not my goal anymore. And I was super intrigued and I want to have a longer dialogue about this. I want to talk to him more at length about this on why this change has come about. And I present for your consideration, probably happiness was a major thing he was searching for. But beyond just happiness, I'm willing to bet cold money there's a need to innovate oneself. If you look around at your life, if you feel mediocrity creeping in, if you see your waistline expanding, if you feel drudgery at the thing that once was shiny for you on a personal level, these are probably signs that you need to disrupt yourself. So if you survey your life, survey your small business, let's say your small business was uh, landscaping. And you got into landscape. In fact, I know this. Uh, Daryl Turner is probably a really good living example. I believe Daryl Turner got into business with Turner's Landscaping, Turner's Lawn or whatever it was at the time. And then he started adding services, adding services to expand the business, but also to stay ahead of his competition. So he started adding. He's already on the property. He started adding pest control and pest cleaning. And then lo and behold, everyone else started entering the landscaping. And man, this landscaping, there's a lot of machinery. There's a lot of oil. I keep breaking lawnmowers. There's so many mechanistic parts. But with pest control, I just have liquid. It's a more optimal business. So he let the landscaping go for a season and focused on the pest cartel, Daryl Turner's pest cartel, and evidence of disrupting yourself before other people disrupt you. And guess what? As you dis as you become disruptive and enter the show and then you're really loud and proud, your competitors are also seeing what you're doing. You did your marketing right. That means everyone knows what you're doing. And if everyone knows what you're doing, it's only a matter of time before your competitors step up to the plate. And the more competitors you invite because your marketing, your own marketing invites other competitors to the plate. That's just how it goes. So we find a problem. And that is, is the cycle of supply and demand, the economic cycle will eventually catch us all and we have to disrupt. So I present my only message today is this. I present for your consideration that you find ways to disrupt yourself. And on that note, today's show, I'm here to announce today's show is the last show I'm just going to do in this format. I was super convicted about this this morning in my own life. And since you're watching, you lovely people, uh, and I think most of you who do come to the show appreciate my, my raw transparency about my own journey. And I do this to shorten your journey. Hopefully you learn from my journey. We started this show in this format at this time, doing all the things we do. And some of these things we're going to absolutely keep. Some of these things we're going to shift. We started this in the middle of the pandemic to number one, encourage people to number two, give me a focal point project and number three, to hype myself. I always tell you guys, one thing you need to learn from the show is be your own hype beast. Jessica, good morning. Thanks for the like this morning. I appreciate you. Jessica O'Head has been a fan for longer than just about anyone other than my wife uh, on the show. Uh, but Jessica has been here for a while. And so she's seen this thing evolve from the pandemic to today. And what I've noticed is there's some things that have gotten stagnant about the show. So we're going to mix things up. So I'm, I'm talking about creative destruction because I do encourage you to look at your life. And if your TLE, your total life experience, fitness and health, healthy, happy relationships, work you enjoy, and spirituality, if those things are not where you want them to be, and Jessica jumps in and says, yes, keep it raw. Listen, I think this is why people like shows like the Joe Rogan experience. They're just who they are. Um, I think more of the celebrities we pay attention to, we gravitate and stay with those that need to change their format. Brittany is here. Good morning, Brittany. Brittany says, super cool, excited to hear about the new format. And Brittany, I'm going to be reaching out to you about the new format because of some of the conversation we had actually last week. And then my dad. George G. Nadu, like the show this morning. Dad, good to see you here today. Dad's probably getting off of work. He works on the West Coast in California uh, as a nurse, and he's been a nurse now for decades. 
and he loves it and usually works the night shift and gets off about this hour. So good morning, dad. So we're going to change the format of the show. No, I'm not going to announce it because I'm undecided on it, but I know that I have to force myself into disruption. I know that the show is exciting and fun, and so many of you people have been very supportive of the show, and we're not, gonna, we're not going to cut the show. We need to change the format of the show for several reasons, and here's where we're going to keep it raw. Back to Jessica, Jessica's component. For those of you who know me, the Welchels know me pretty well. Jessica's come to know me. My dad knows me. My morning routine is one of the most important things about what I bring in terms of my A game to my partners, Brittany and Adam are partners on their business and our business with Spark Sites. It's how I bring my A game. I spend most of the entire morning, I spend from the time I get up at 4 a.m. to the time I plug in between 7 and 8 a.m. every day. And I normally give myself like that three or four hour span where I have read and studied, done a, a workout that has pushed me to the limit but that entire time I'm thinking, before I talk to my first person, before I turn into Mr. Motormouth, I have actually spent that entire time thinking in my head who I'm going to be that day, the leadership and vision I need to bring my team, that one or two most important decisions I need to make that day to take things to the next level. And by the time I hit 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., I am at my peak for personal power. Now, since we've been doing the show and the pandemic hit, I knew that there was an emergency trend uh, to, to borrow language that Brittany and Adam have given me over the years. Life, everyone's moods, the businesses were at a high risk. And I knew we were in an emergency trend. So I had to do something extreme. So we started the show. I get up at four. My workouts stopped full stop because I normally take three to four hours to get into a frame of mind where I'm at my peak personal power. I knew that I was going to do the show between 6.30 and 6.45. And at getting up at four, that only gives me about two and a half hours. My study has been cut nearly entirely. My fitness has been cut nearly entirely. And my writing. And I write books. You guys know I write books. You guys know that the next uh, iteration of the Spark, the Top 100 Dream Igniter is coming out. You guys know that I've got my tester books coming in. And we're going to launch that this year in a big way. But I haven't written on my second and third book. The second and third book. The second one being The State of the Spark, which is actually a little primer on what is State of the Spark and a one called The Mission. And that's kind of been my low-key project, and I have frameworks for all of those, and I have some writing, a ton of writing in State of the Spark, a little bit of writing in The Mission. But these things have been suffering because by the time I finish the show, then my morning is already about me. So you guys are often rushing off to work at 7 a.m. I do the same thing. I hang up and we go. So my raw transparency so that you can learn from me is my TLE has been suffering. My fitness and health, especially. My healthy, happy relationships, they've been fine. I've been building relationships with you guys. I mean, literally with people like Katie Payton, all these guys, we've been actually building relationships and you guys have been learning more about Spark. And I would contend to this moment that this show has been the most important thing for the state of the Spark brand since we started, but we got to change the model. Brittany jumps in and says this. Brittany says... Creative destruction. I really love that terminology. We use uh, Elena Cardone's phrase, you are either creating or destroying your empire. I just read that. I just read that just two days ago, that section in the book, Brittany, um, where you're either creating or destroying your empire. And creative destruction is totally creating your empire. Absolutely. And here's why. Because you think that neutral is neither creating nor destroying. It's holding steady. I'm not talking about business. I'm talking about physics. If you believe in physics that you are holding steady, you're actually decomposing. If your molecules get stagnant and you are holding steady, you're slowly, well, slowly or quickly, it, it depends on your situation, but you're slowly or, or quickly de disintegrating, decomposing. You're not composing, you're decomposing. <laughs> what I mean by that is you're not creating. When you compose something, you create it. I, I compose a book. I create a book. I create a life. I compose a life. If you're not composing, you're decomposing. And so we are going to absolutely change the format. So this morning, this very morning, we're going to change the format. We're going to change some of the format on time. We're going to change the format on guests. I think you guys like when I get on a topic that I'm passionate about, like etymology, where words come from like uh, a lot of those philosophies, but I think a lot of you have really appreciated some of the interviews and the dialogue 
And so we're actually going to bring on more guests and we're going to start moving towards higher profile guests. I think we're also considering a co-host. Um, not for all the shows, but for a lot of the shows, dialogue is really important. And I think some of you are intrigued at the Spark methodology, at the Grant's ideology, some of the things I've been studying. Some of that's interesting, yes, but other people are even more interesting and equally interesting. So as of this morning, watch for the show. I'll announce, I'll tag people when the next episode, we're going to continue. We're on episode, where are we at? We're on episode 173. We're going to continue the episodes, but we are trying to reach a broader audience with the message of State of the Spark. We are trying to reach more people to impact the goal, igniting lives of explosive significance, starting with your own. So we are going to creatively inter pattern interrupt ourselves before the market does. Before you guys go away and say, take a hike, Grant, I'm sick of this. We're actually going to innovate it. So I'll be reaching out to some of you to help me innovate it. I'll be reaching out to some of you to help take things to the next level. But I wanted to make this show not just about that announcement, but showing you what it's like. You know how scary it is to say, hey, I've grown addicted to checking in at 630 and get an endorphin bump. When I see that number go from 5 to 10 to 13 to 7, I actually love that drama. It becomes addicting. But I have to ask myself, is it serving the greater mission? Or is it just an ego boost I got? And when it became, when I became realizing that it was more of an ego boost than a pragmatically helpful thing to you and your vision, that's when I knew I had to pattern interrupt, pattern interrupt, but I had to creatively disrupt, creatively destruct in order to, as Brittany said just now, in order to create, where it is right there, create the empire, her last sentence there. And not just my empire, but help you create your empire to help you achieve your next level of what you consider personal success. So I'll be watching for these changes. We'll be making announcements. Sometimes you might see me go live and, and it'll it'll look just like this show. Sometimes we'll pop in with a guest and it'll be pre-recorded. And sometimes it'll just be snippets and clips from some of these interviews. So watch for that. But know this, guys. Know that no matter what's going on, I'm out here igniting lives of explosive significance, and I suggest you do the same. Remember, if you need any tools or resources, we will be growing stateofthespark.com. Please check back once a week, once a month. Check back or send your friends there. We'll be adding to the blog, and if you just want to continue the dialogue, the one pattern, one thing that we'll absolutely be doing is doubling down our focus on those who have plugged in to the Goals and Gratitude Group because we want to make sure that those people who are vested in care are getting our highest attention. So visit us at the Facebook Goals and Gratitude Group uh, uh, for State of the Spark. But other than that, go about your day thinking how you can disrupt yourself in scary ways and make more room. I heard this. Sacrifice means this. Sacrifice is not losing something. Sacrifice is making room, uh, making room for things of a higher nature by removing things of a lower nature. Sometimes sacrifice, you might have, it's like getting rid of the good to make room for the great. And that's all it is. And your TLE, your fitness and health of a primo importance in my fitness and health has not been here at all since the pandemic. Your healthy, happy relationships. I've been getting some of that. Your work we enjoy. I've been getting some of that spirituality though is a big one are you studying are you prioritizing these things because you need to break your own mental loops so that quest begins today with me is it beginning today with you listen get out there make it a killer day ignite your own life of explosive significance so that you can help others ignite theirs have a killer day i'm grateful for you